Hello everyone. I already did this problem and I recorded it, but the sound was actually a bit trashy. I hope that this new sound is going to be better from now on. I'm going to try to keep it consistent. So this problem, 21, merge two sorted lists, was given from Amazon in a coding entity. Let's read the problem and see a solution. I'm going to remove this. As I said, I already recorded it, but I decided to scrap it. You are given the heads of two sorted linked lists. That's list one and list two. And we need to merge the two lists in one sorted list. The list should be made by splicing together the nodes of the first two lists. Return the head of the merged linked list. So whenever you are on a coding interview, the first thing that you want to do definitely is to have a working solution. Now I'm going to show you the easiest working solution, which is going against the rule here because we're not slicing anything. But if you think about it, List node node one and list node node two. And by the way, these here for you are going to be list one and list two, but I renamed them at node one because I think they sound a bit better that way. Now, if I have node one, I can go from node one dot next and then dot next again and then not next again. And I'm going to store each and every number that I extract from that in a list one. I'm going to do the same for list two. Then I'm going to list one dot add list two, right? Then I'm going to sort it, so sort, and then I'm going to have a perfectly sorted one list. I need to redo it into a linked list again, and that is going to be a working solution. It's going to have a space complexity of big O of n and a time complexity of big O of n log n. And log n is the one that um, is going to be a bit bothering because that's how long a sort actually takes, the fastest sort that we can use. So with that having said, what we need to do now is to actually slice together the nodes. I think last time I did it in paint and I showed you the paint, but now when I have experience because I redo it currently, I scrapped the other idea. I do know that it's going to be very messy. So I'm going to try to explain it with comments. Now I'm going to go down here and I'm going to do it only with two values. I found that this is going to be, um, I think the easiest way for, for people to understand, hopefully. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them down below. I'll answer them all. So let's say that yeah, I have the list one. This is going to be note one. And this is going to be node 2. Now, what I want to get, right? So the final result that I need is 1, 1, 2, and 3. And the way I can actually achieve that is with splicing, is through a recursion. Now, as I said, it's a bit difficult to understand. Before I begin explaining, I want you to think about sets. Now, keep in mind that I'm going to calculate between 1 and 3. Then I'm going to calculate between 2 and 3. And then I'm going to calculate between 3 and nothing. So I'm just going to return 3. Just keep in mind that I'm going to write here as important. Mucho importanto. And I want you to really look at this while I'm explaining. So let's actually go. The first thing that I want to do is to as I said, take these sets. The whole idea is that whenever I say list one dot next is going to be equal to, for example, list two. What I say here is that this is also uh, in the mucho importanto paragraph. So this is another importanto. Okay, good. So I want you to remember this. This is very, very important. If I say list one dot next equals to list two, I'm going to get here without doing anything at all. I'm going to get one, one and two. And I'm going to get that because I'm appending to the list one dot next. So it's this list one head and this is its next value. And now I'm changing the next value to point to list two. And you can see that, uh, for example, this is going to produce one, one, two. So I'm saying, okay, from one onwards, 
don't point to 3, point to the head list 2, and the head points to 1 and then it points to 2. So I'm getting this, very important. Now I'm going to do the following thing. First, I'm going to test if l1.value, so let me just write a list1.value is less than list2.value. If that is the case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say list1.next is going to be equal to, and then I, I have the function over here with, with parameters, and I'm going to, of course, return list1 because I'm doing stuff on the list1. The same thing I'm actually going to do for list2, so I'm going to switch these, right? And I'm going to return list2. Now I'm going to go through the code trying to explain that. Keep in mind that it's a difficult difficult problem, even though it's labeled as easy. It's uh, quite cumbersome to get around. And I want you to keep these three things here in your mind while we're actually coding the solution. Very important. Okay, let's delete that. And I'm going to try to explain throughout the coding session. So the first thing that I want to do is to write exit statements. So I'm going to say exit statements, uh, just so I don't actually forget it. Next thing is I'm going to do the, the paragraph that I already explained. So here I'm going to check if node1.value is less than node2.value. If that is the case, then I'm going to change stuff to the node1. So I'm going to say node1.next is going to be equal to, of course, this is recursion, so I just call the function and I'm passing node1.next and as a second parameter I pass node2 and here I'm just going to return node1. Here I can say else, it doesn't matter if they're equal. Oh, and one more important thing, if they're actually equal, you don't really care where you go to the list1 or list2, it doesn't really matter because the number is the same, so you can go either way, it's going to work. Else list2, oops, node2.next is going to be equal to merge two lists with node1, node2.next, and I'm going to return node2. So now when I have the code written down, let me try to write the comments here. I'm going to say node1 is going to be equal to 1, 2, and I'm going to say node2 is going to be equal to 1 and 3. So at first I'm going to check is node1 value, as they're pointing at the beginning, less than node 2 value. Well, that is not really the case. So I'm just going to come here. As I said, when they're equal, we don't really care if you go left or right, either node 1 or node 2, because they're pretty much the same, right? We don't really care about it. So I can say node2.next is going to be equal to this function. Now, what I say initially is node 2 is going to have 1, but node2.next is going to be equal, right, to something else, not 3. I don't want it to be equal to 3. So node2.next is going to come here and it's going to check 3 and 1. Do you remember the sets that I have been talking about? So now they come into play. I check one against 1 and 3. Node1 value is less than node2 value this time, so I'm gonna have node1 as being 1, but node1.next is going to be on the question. So here I'm going to have node 1 equals 1 since I'm returning it, but node 1.next is equal to a question mark. I don't know. The next time I'm going to check 2 against 3, and you can see that now 2 is less than 3 again, so node 1.next is going to be equal to something else because we don't know when, when have we reached the end of the list. And at the end, I'm going to pop up from the recursions and I'm going to go from here, from here, from here and I'm going to have the head 1 and then I'm going to have 1, 2 and 3. That's how it oh, drops down, it drops like a domino at the end. And the only problem that we haven't figured out yet is actually the exit statements. What happens when I go here and I have no? So if this is the case, what I do want to return is the version which doesn't have a no, right? Because if I return no, I might be skipping the three and I might have one, one, two and then have no. And when the server is checking against this, uh, it's going to assume that you have finished your list and it's going to say that you have a wrong answer because it expects three. So that's something important. 
So in order for me to write that, I'm just going to check if note one is equal to no, and then I'm gonna return note two. And I'm gonna check if note two is equal to no, then I'm going to return note one. Keep in mind that I'm still gonna return no at some point, so it's gonna be this, because I'm just not going to have a choice. All right, so that's pretty much the problem. Let's uh, run the code. Then I'm going to run examples as per usual, and then I'm going to submit to the server if everything passes. Okay, seems all right. Use example test cases. Let's go with these. And hopefully, since we hit the 10 minutes mark, I'm just going to push it to the server. Okay, and it's going to work. This is from the earlier today when I recorded the video. And yeah, there we go. So that was pretty much it. Now let's uh, figure out uh, the complexities as a final part. What we need to talk about is that space complexity is going to be bigger of n since we are using the recursion. We're not using any lists as uh, the example that I have already explained in the beginning, but we are using recursion, which fills the stack, which is big O of n. And usually people forget about that. Okay, and time complexity is going to be big O of n. I don't see anything. This can go as for long as possible. So big O of n. We don't have n log n. We're not sorting anything. We already have a sorted list and we just need to rearrange them. All right, and that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, leave them down below. I think it's a serious problem, so there's always the possibility that you haven't understood something. Write the question and I will answer it. Hopefully, then it's going to be clearer. Thank you for watching and I hope I see you in the next one. Goodbye.